This video is sponsored by Brilliant. In this video, I'm gonna answer you guys' question on how I got that nice black finish on the fighting cabinet I just built a few months back. Even though I did show the stain and finish that I used in that video, I didn't really go into any details on how I prepared the wood or my methods on staining and finishing. So I've been working on this large media console this week and even though most of it is in walnut, we're gonna add some slatted sliding doors in here that's gonna be finished in black. So I figured this would be the perfect opportunity to show you guys how I stain and finish. Finish. And I'll go over some of the differences in my process when dealing with larger pieces like this. And I've got all the parts for our doors right here. And I know people are gonna ask me what type of wood this is. So just to let you guys know, this is all white ash, which I really like to use because of its light neutral colors since we're staining it and we really don't want any of that natural tint to come through. And I know we're staining it black, so it probably doesn't really matter, but in case you're staining it some other color, it's always nice to start with something that's light and neutral. And these guys they're just cheaper than maple and white oak. Eventually all these parts will come together like this but whether I'm working on something large or something small, I always do all the sanding before the glue up. That way I don't have to deal with corners or in this case it would be these tight gaps. We are sanding up hundreds of small parts today and instead of sanding each one individually, we're gonna use these clamps here to help me squeeze these parts together which gives me one single large surface to work with. And then just like I would with a larger project, I'm gonna use a pencil to lightly mark across the surfaces so that I can see which areas I've already sanded and where I still need to do some work. All right, so here's what we're using for finishing. We're gonna start with Ruby Monaco's Pre-Color Easy in Intense Black for staining. And then we're gonna finish off with their Oil Plus 2C in charcoal. And just so you guys know, Ruby was not sponsoring this video. They did, however, send me these for free after they saw me using this on the fighting cabinet build. And they're not expecting me to say anything nice or do a review on these, but I do really like to use these. Um, anyway, so this being a hard wax oil finish, it does need to be able to penetrate the wood and bond with the wood fibers. So Ruby actually recommends not going over 150 when sanding so that it's not gonna close off the pores too much and affect the way that the oil is gonna penetrate the wood. But I've actually never had any issues with going up to 180 grit. So we're gonna start with 120 grit and then go to 150 grit and finish off with 180 grit. And we're gonna use a random orbital sander to go over all the larger surfaces. And the trick to sanding is just take our time and go slow. And just let the sander do all the work until all the pencil marks are gone. And for all the smaller surfaces, we'll hand sand with a little sponge pad to avoid reshaping the part and rounding off any of the corners. I use a sander with really good dust collection, which was actually why I got the sander in the first place. And most of the dust is sucked up during the sanding process. So I usually just go straight to the next grit without blowing the dust off. And I never really had any issues with this. But if you're seeing a lot of those nasty swirl marks or pigtails, make sure to blow the dust off in between sanding and it's gonna help a lot with preventing those. And once we've gone through all the grits, we're gonna take a wet rag with water on it to wipe down all the parts. Essentially water popping the parts to raise the grain and reopen those pores. Once everything's dried, you can feel that the surfaces are really rough. So we're just gonna hand sand everything lightly with 180 grit until everything feels smooth again. And there's really no need to mark the surfaces with a pencil this time since the raised grain will be a pretty good indicator of where it still needs to be sanded. And then finally, we'll use mineral spares to thoroughly wipe down all the parts and make sure that there aren't any dust left over because otherwise the finish is actually going to bond to the dust instead of the wood fibers and end up creating this microscopic paste over our surface, which is definitely not what we want. So it's really important to make sure that our surfaces are completely clean. Um, anyway, once all the mineral spares has flashed off, let's uh, get these guys glued up. The 
this came out so good. I've actually never made any slatted parts like this before. And honestly, I cannot wait to throw some stain on here. It's gonna look gorgeous in black. Um, oh yeah, guys, just so you know, this pre-color easy stuff, it's a water-based stain that this by itself does not offer any protection for the wood. It just allows us to color it before we apply the finish. But this particular product was formulated so that it doesn't interfere with how the oil finish is going to bond to the wood. This stuff is pretty expensive and we don't want to waste any of it. So we're gonna, well, we're gonna stir it first and then we're gonna use a syringe to transfer what we need into another cup. And I wish I had a larger syringe for this but this is all I have in the shop right now um, so even though our doors aren't that big there are still a lot of surfaces that we need to cover and luckily a small amount of this stuff will go a long way so I think we're just gonna start with about half an ounce and see how far it'll take us to apply our stain we're just gonna use these white non scratch pads that I got off of Amazon they're pretty cheap about $15 for this pack and when I need to apply finish I just cut off a little piece. And these are actually perfect for this project because of how thin they are. So we're just gonna dip this into our cup and start spreading the stain into the workpiece and just make sure that every surface, nook, and cranny is covered. And it doesn't matter if you wanna scrub it along the grain or in a circular motion, but I do recommend finishing a last pass along the direction of the grain, which actually isn't part of Rubio's instructions, but I'll talk about why I do this a little bit later. Um, so once the stain has been applied, you know, formally across all the surfaces. We don't need to let it sit on there, so just take some rags and start wiping it off. All right guys, don't hate me, I, I lied. I ended up using four, maybe five ounces to cover both of these doors. And the main reason was just because I really needed to saturate that pad in order to get the stain into those tiny, tight corners. And yeah, it was actually really challenging. But anyway, the process for larger projects is pretty much the same, except I start out by pouring the stain right onto the surface and then use the white pad to spread it out evenly. And just like before, it doesn't matter how we scrub the stain into the wood, but it's always a good idea to take a last pass along the direction of the grain to even things out and remove any lap lines before we completely wipe everything off. Like I said earlier, that step wasn't included as part of Rubio's instructions for this. Um, at least I didn't see it on any of the videos. It wasn't on the back of the can and I didn't read it on their website, but I don't know, maybe I missed it. But people have told me that when they didn't do that step, they end up with swirl marks or lap lines. So yeah, I think it's just a good idea to do. It really doesn't take any time and I've always had good results with it. Um, anyway, so once this is all done, we should have this uniform matte look to this. And now we just gotta wait for a couple hours for this to dry and then apply our finish. Two hours later. My highly calibrated fingertips is telling me that everything's dry and we are ready to apply our finish. So the 2C in the oil plus 2C means that this is a two part finish. One is the actual oil and the other part is an accelerator and we actually don't need the accelerator all it does is that it speeds up the full cure from three weeks to about one week and depending on what you're working on you could actually save some money by just getting the oil I think I mentioned this earlier but this finish will bond with the wood fibers on a molecular level so that it protects the wood while still maintaining the natural look and feel of the grain and the stain that we just applied over it it doesn't affect it in any way and guys please don't ask me how that works chemistry was possibly my worst subject in school, but I'm sure the guys over at Rubio really science the crap out of these products. But hey, if you are someone who's interested in science and chemistry, there's actually a free and really fun way to learn more about it on brilliant.org, who's kind enough to be the sponsor of today's video. So if you haven't heard, Brilliant is an amazing online learning platform for math, science, and computer science. And they've got all sorts of topics within those categories like calculus, physics, chemical reactions, AI, neural networks, and the courses are actually really awesome because they're interactive and engaging. It just makes learning the subjects so much more fun. And I remember when I was applying for college, and I was kind of torn between engineering or physics. Engineering eventually won out because I figured it was just easier to find a job that way, but I still have this deep fascination for physics. So I've been focusing on their courses on special relativity and gravitational physics. And honestly, it's really given me a much better foundation 
foundational understanding on those topics. But yeah, if any of this sounds interesting to you and maybe you just want to have a better understanding about chemical reactions so you'll know more about wood finishing, then head over to brilliant.org forward slash beverage creations to get 30 days to try out Brilliant for free. And the first 200 people to sign up with the link in the descriptions will also get 20% off their premium annual subscription. Thank you so much Brilliant for sponsoring today's video and uh, let's get back to it. Just so you guys know, when we're finishing something black like we are today, I always go with their charcoal color. And when I'm finishing darker woods like walnut, I always use their pure, which will give you that same dark warm hue that we will get with other oil finishes. And they've got a bunch of other colors on their website and it doesn't matter which ones we choose, the finishing process is exactly the same. So let's open this up and give it a good stir. And just like earlier, we're gonna transfer everything into a cup with our syringe. And I think we're gonna do three ounces this time. Uh, and this is a three to one mixture. So we're gonna do three parts of the oil finish and then one part of the accelerator. This is actually a lot. Just for reference, I use about the same amount or maybe four ounces to finish that entire case over there. But if we learn anything from staining these guys is that we really need to get those pads saturated to get into those tight corners. So. It is what it is. Just like before, let's dip the pad into our special sauce and just start scrubbing it in. Now, we don't want to apply more than what we can do within 10 minutes because it's going to start becoming more and more difficult to remove. But luckily, I kind of knew what to expect after staining, so this time around, it actually wasn't quite as difficult and just went a lot faster and I was able to do the whole door in one go. And I was actually surprised that we were able to do both doors with just those three ounces. I honestly thought that we needed to add a little bit more. But yeah, um, once everything's been coated, we just let it sit for about 10 minutes and then came back and wiped everything off with some rags. And we wanna make sure to wipe all the excess oil off, especially in those corners, so that we don't end up with some gummy residue. So just keep on wiping until everything's clean and even take off the gloves to do a final pass so that we're not transferring any of that oil from the gloves onto the workpiece. And that's it. Now we're just gonna leave these here for 24 hours and let it dry. Um, when applying the finish for larger pieces, the process starts out the same way as we did with the stain. We're gonna pour the finish over the surface and then use a squeegee to spread it out. And we don't want big globs of this product in one spot for too long or it's gonna darken the wood in that particular spot. And you can see some dark spots already forming when I began spreading the finish because I was adjusting the camera. But once I started buffing it with the pad, it was gone. So luckily, it wasn't that big of a deal. But once the entire surface was covered, let it sit for about 10 minutes for it all to soak in and then come back to wipe it off with rags. And like I said earlier, we don't want to apply more finish than what we can do in 10 minutes. So especially for larger projects, we always want to work in sections. But that is pretty much all there is to it. Oh, one more thing. Just so you guys know, we will not be able to get this deep of a black color by only using the finish. It's gonna darken the wood, especially in the grain, but it's definitely not enough, especially on lighter woods. And even if we started with something darker like walnut, we still end up getting some of that brown peeking through. And if we compare them, it's definitely not that deep black that we're going for. And I've tried other methods to ebonize wood and this is by far not the cheapest, but I would say this is the simplest method that gave me the most consistent result. And all the while maintaining what, what I think is the most natural look and feel of the grain. So what do you guys think? I am actually really curious to see if any of you guys have tried this product before and if you tried other methods as well, how do you think this compares to those? Let me know in the comments. Uh, other than that, I hope you guys enjoy this video and if you're interested to see how this media console turns out, be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell notification so that you know when that video goes live. And I guess I will see you guys in the next video.